King George may not have been a Muslim, but I can assure you he was not an American. No, he did not have allegiance to America. His loyalty was to a foreign power, a foreign country. He had the only thing he thought about Americans were that they were a number. Americans were just a people to tax with no representation. And that's why the Minutemen stood up. But it was not the Minutemen who drew the first blood. You see, King George was not an American. But he ruled over America. And he was willing to use force to keep Americans obedient. He did that in 1770. In 1770, his Redcoats massacred some Americans in Boston. That was where America was going to get its first taste of the foreign power that was going to use force to keep them obedient. I'm talking about history repeating itself here today. I'm talking about a foreign power. King George and his Redcoats, they were not American. They were a foreign power. And they shot down the Minutemen, not only in 1770, but in 1775. They drew blood first. History repeats itself. We have a Muslim president who is not loyal to America. No, his loyalty is to somebody else. A small foreign power is in control of him. And this foreign power has drawn blood first, just like 1770, when the Minutemen lay in the snow, bleeding out. In 1770 and again in 1775, the Minutemen lay in the snow, bleeding out. King George drew blood first. As Obama and his foreign-controlled masters, they drew blood first as Lavoie Finnicum lay in the snow, bleeding, just like 1775. King George could smell it in the air. He may not have been in America. King George may not have been an American, but he smelled revolution in the air. And he built up his redcoats from 1770 to 1775. He built up his redcoats. That's what they were called back then. Today, Obama and his foreign masters... They call them the black coats. I call them the black coats on steroids. They're building up their army. Their army is already in preparation because Obama and his foreign masters, they already smell revolution in the air. That's why they drew blood first. And just like the red coats who were just taking orders, the black shirts are just taking orders because they're scared of their paycheck and their pension, so they're just following orders, which makes me want to puke. But I want to make sure everybody knows it's not, it was not the Minutemen, it was not the militia men of 1770 and 1775 that drew blood first. No, we did not drew blood. We did not. King George drew the first blood. The Minutemen of today we did not draw the blood first, no. Lavoy Finnicum, Ammon Bundy, the militia men were peaceful men. They had a right to carry their weapons, just like the Minute Men carried their weapons back in 1770. They carried their weapons back then because that's an American right that was put in the Constitution, by the way. We have a right to bear arms. But it was a peaceful revolution, it was a peaceful protest. A peaceful protest. And King Obama drew blood first at orders from his foreign masters who blackmail our Congress and blackmail our senators into silence. We have no leaders for Americans anymore. We are taxed. We are taxed, but we have no representation. We are represented by nobody. So revolution, people can smell it in the air. King George smelled it back then. King Obama smells the revolution today. And he's preparing because they are willing 
and ready to use force to make Americans obedient. But there are some Americans who do not want to lie down and be a slave. And that's what I'm talking about today. There are some Americans who cannot be a slave. It's not in their DNA. It, quite frankly, it would be impossible for some Americans to be a slave. Lavoie Finnicum was one of those Minutemen. He was one of those patriots who was not going to be a slave to a foreign power. And he learned that that foreign power was going to use force down upon him. If Lavoie Finnicum was not going to be obedient, then he was going to be shot down in cold blood and left to bleed out in the, in the snow. Is this 1770 all over again? Is that what this is all about? I'm here to document it. If this is 1770 all over again, then I'm going to put it down in a video. I'm going to document it because, quite frankly, I do smell tyranny in the air. I'm smelling something in the air just like the Minutemen did way back then. They smelled it. They smelled revolution, and I smell the tyranny today. The only difference between 1770 and today is the Minutemen back then did not have drones humming above their head. You see, Lavoie Finnicum heard these babies above his head. The days before he was shot down in cold blood, he had to deal with these things flying above his head. These are armed Obama is now arming these babies. The FBI has them in their arsenal. So we have tyranny on steroids. For you see, the Redcoats had their long rifles, but the Redcoats didn't have armed drones. So our battle is going to be a little tougher. And back then, King George did not have FEMA camps either. So I'm going to document history. This is the first time in American history in over 240 years. This is the first time that America has had a Muslim president who is going to put Americans in FEMA camps. I want to document the men and women who are going to be put into these FEMA camps. These are the first patriots. These are the first Minutemen to be initiated into the FEMA camps, federal retraining centers located all across the country where they will be trained and programmed to follow the new United Nations Agenda 21 rules and regulations. This is history in the making. This is the first time that a president of the United States controlled by a foreign power, this will be the first time the president has put Americans into these FEMA camps, federal retraining centers, to program Americans to follow the foreign powers that are now in control of our land. This is historical. This is, a, this is an historic event. I want to document it. These are the names. Just today they have indicted more Americans. There's the names. I want the names out there for everybody to see. I want history to document this. I, I want people in future generations to be able to look back and say, these were the first patriots. These were the first Minutemen to be put into the FEMA camps by a president controlled by a foreign power. And this foreign power has no allegiance to America. I'm not even sure they, they've even read the Constitution. Because all these patriots did is had the audacity to protest with their sidearms. Doesn't anybody in this world know anymore that America has had the right to bear arms for over 200 years? It's in our Constitution. We're allowed to bear arms. We're allowed to protest. Now, King George disagreed with that. King George said, no, you will not protest and you will not bear arms in front of me. And my redcoats were the first to draw blood, said King George. Well, we set King George straight. And now it's Obama 
controlled by a foreign power that he now he has drawn blood first. Remember, it's not the patriots that drew blood. We did not draw we did not draw blood first. We did not. It was Obama controlled by a foreign power and they told him, "Yes, make an example out of Lavoy Finicum. Draw blood first." And draw blood they did. You see, King Obama did not negotiate with Americans. No, he sent in his domestic and foreign mercenaries. And the order was in, make an example out of these Americans who want to speak up. Make an example. How dare they bear their sidearms and protest at the same time? We will not have that. So yes, I do smell something in the air. I smell 1770 in the air. I see red coats. But this time I see them in black shirts on steroids. You cannot miss it. If you got your eyes wide open, you cannot miss it. It's right in front of you. I personally saw the mercenaries in action. I talked to the mercenaries. And I tell you this. If Hillary is elected, if we have to put up with eight more years of Obama-Hillary regime, then I'm talking we're probably going back to 1775. I don't know for a fact, but I'm, I'm thinking there's only one thing that's going to prevent 1775. There are now people talking about that Donald Trump is what we call the peaceful revolution. So maybe, just maybe, there's a peaceful revolution in the air. If they can let... Donald Trump walk into the White House and settle things down, maybe there will not be a 1775. Maybe it will be a peaceful revolution. I don't know.